Hi, I'm Christine and I'm a first year electrical engineering student. My name is Rohan. I'm a fourth year mechanical and aerospace engineering student. I'm Ashe. I'm a first year aerospace engineering student. My name is Andre. I'm an alumni with a mechanical engineering degree. And we are part of the UC Davis Space and Satellite Systems Club. And today we will be presenting single axis rotation testing to determine camera performance thresholds for UC Davis's first CubeSat mission. So a critical component to the success of our CubeSat or our satellite is the ability to take clear pictures of the Earth from space. And there are many things that makes a clear photo, things like lighting, exposure, image size, but what our research is primarily concerned with is how the actual movement of the satellite is going to affect the motion blur of the photos we're taking. Essentially, what we want to figure out is the maximum speed that the satellite can be spinning that will still be able to yield relatively clear photos. This way, when our satellite is in space, it will only take pictures that have minimal motion blur. To do this, we came up with two setups that basically record the rotational data of a spinning camera as the camera is taking pictures. Both methods involve some kind of rotating platform that the camera sits on as it's taking the photos. So the first method uses a platform hanging from a fishing line, and the second method, which is a collaborative effort between our club and the Human Robotics Vehicles Integration and Performance Lab, uses a platform that acts sort of like a reverse air hockey puck in that it rotates freely on a thin layer of compressed air. Not only are these setups helpful for our research, but this method of recording motion while in motion will be a huge help to other members of the Attitude Determination and Control Systems team who also have rotating components of need and testing. So now Andre is going to talk about the two methods I just mentioned. As mentioned by Christine, in order to acquire data on how the quality of the pictures is affected by the rotation of the CubeSat, two experiments were designed. One to test the system in free rotation, meaning the rotation of speed varies freely, and one in control rotation, meaning the angular speed is maintained constant throughout the test. For the free rotation setup, the camera was placed on a 3D printed structure, shown in the picture below, along with the Raspberry Pi, a gyroscope, and a power source. The structure was then suspended by a nylon fishing line which has very low torsion resistance, and the whole system was spun to some arbitrary rotational speed. The camera took pictures continuously while the gyroscope measured the speed at each moment, and the Pi stored and saved the data collected on a data sheet. This process had a long enough duration for the torsion of the line to be saturated and forced the platform to spin on the opposite direction. The data was later analyzed to determine a threshold of rotation which a clear picture could be taken. This, however, was only done based on a qualitative analysis and a quantitative study of the pictures would be conducted in further experiments. Some of the main advantages of this method were that it was quite inexpensive, easy to set up, and produce quick results. It is, however, hard to repeat with the same values, and the system is not always stable on the other planes of motion. For the control rotation test, a compressed air floating unit setup will be used on a flat table. The idea here is to create a cushion of air under the floating unit, which will produce minimum friction with the table. This will allow the speed to be controlled in the sense that it can be maintained constant throughout the test, such that multiple pictures can be taken at the same speed to verify the results obtained by the free rotation test. Despite being slower and less practical to mount, the system is much more reliable than the fishing line setup, and the process will ideally be completely repeatable. Moreover, this, mechanisms, this mechanism was specifically designed for CubeSat ADCS applications by the HVRP lab staff, as mentioned before, adding credibility to the experiment. And now Rohan is going to go a little bit more into how the float unit itself works. So here's a picture of the CAD model for the float unit. And uh, this float unit was designed by uh, graduate student researcher Josh Day. And we've adapted his setup to be used for our testing purposes. Um, so part of that is uh, first the 3D printed base here in blue. And so this part basically mounts to the float unit and allows us to um, mount the Raspberry Pi as well as the camera onto it for our testing. And the way that this works is there'll be uh, cans of compressed air underneath uh, the float unit, and that basically uh, targets air outwards down out of these, uh, these corners, and that creates a thin cushion of air. 
and that thin cushion of air is what uh, the float unit actually floats on. So this is a very low friction um, cushion that allows us to rotate freely. And so now Christine is going to talk about uh, the hardware and software involved with this testing. So both of the methods mentioned above require the use of the MPU9250, which, you, which is the rectangle you see here, which is a gyroscope that we're using to record rotational data. It also uses the Pi Camera V2 module, which is a smartphone sized camera that we're using to take pictures. And we're using the Raspberry Pi 4B. The ADS-1015, which is an analog to digital converter, is only used to measure the air pressure of the float unit. Therefore, it can be removed during the fishing line test. To see how the software works, we can look at this float chart down here. When the user is ready to start, the gyroscope will send acceleration data to the Raspberry Pi. That data will then be written to a CSV file, which we could then analyze later in Excel. And then that same data is annotated onto a photo that the camera takes at the same time. This way we can directly compare how the rotational speed affects the motion blur of the photos. At this point, the flowchart sort of splits to indicate the difference between the float unit software, which you see here in yellow, and the fishing line software, which just, which just continues in the gray part. If we are using the float unit, then the program will send pressure data from the ADS-1015 to the Raspberry Pi. We can then view this data in real time on our computer or smartphone via MQTT protocol, which is just a protocol that lets electronic devices communicate with each other through a wireless network. Next, the program will pause for a set period of time. This way we can control the frequency at which data points and pictures are being taken. All of this will repeat in a loop until the user indicates that are until the user indicates that they are done taking pictures and they want to stop. So now we will look how we actually analyze the data that we get from this process. The Raspberry Pi is programmed such that when the pictures are taken, it annotates each photo with the angular speed at which it was taken, which provides data for both qualitative and quantitative analysis of the picture's quality and determination of an optimum threshold for mission success. The speed data collected is also saved and plotted with respect to time, which provides a visual representation of the change in velocity due to the fishing line's rotation or stiffness, as an equation for angular acceleration can be derived from the plot. In the case of the suspended platform, the curve has a negative slope since the speed decreases as torsion is applied to the line. For the floating unit case, it's expected that the curve will look flat, as the speed will ideally be maintained constant throughout the process. Since the process of data collection will be the same for the floating unit test, the same Raspberry Pi and MATLAB codes will be used. So in order to deal with the motion blur caused due to rapid motion, a MATLAB function of sharpness estimation from image gradient can be used. The function measures the sharpness of the original image and then uses mean filtering to sharpen the image from the data collected through number of pixels. However, this function has not been used yet, but we will be using it in future. So here are some of the pictures that the Raspberry Pi camera was able to take during our fishing line tests. So as you can see, uh, as mentioned before, the rotational rate is annotated onto the picture. So this allows us to see large amounts of pictures and qualitatively judge uh, how clear the picture was at each uh, varying rotational rate. So as you can see, at around 3.8 degrees per second, uh, the picture is fairly blurry, uh, but at a short distance, uh, parts of the whiteboard here can be seen. Um, but at 16.8 degrees per second, it's much harder to discern what's uh, going on in the picture. There's a lot more blur associated with it. Okay, so the graph of rotational rate versus time is a decreasing slope, and we want it ideally to be a straight line as uh, the velocity should be constant. However, for the fishing line test, the angular velocity decreases over time before it reaches zero and changes to the direction. This basically means that the fishing line unit, which was moving in a clockwise direction, starts moving in a counterclockwise. Hence, a float unit test with a, a low friction is preferred for ideal testing. The, the testing using fishing line test served our purpose of measuring the angular velocity of gyroscope camera. However, uh, for the fishing line, there was a resisting torque acting on it, 
Hence, a float unit would be considered ideal for repeatable testing. For the first test, the data gathered was in a closed room with a target at fairly close distance. So even though this helped, with, uh, helped us in measuring the angular velocity of the camera, the lighting was artificial and the effects of natural lighting still need to be observed. A motion blur was detected at higher speed. Uh, hence, to remove it, a deconvolution process would be possible using a MATLAB function. For the analysis of data can help us in development of an algorithm to compute the speed threshold for a blur image. These methods can also be used for other ADCS tests. This successful demonstration of Raspberry Pi camera provides a pathway for future ADCS testing using the same equipment, that is fishing line and float unit over an air bearing table. This equipment can be set up relatively easily and tests can be performed in a small budget. This can provide a framework for budget constrained university projects. These tests can also be used to perform other ADCS testing. So I'd like to acknowledge Professor Stephen Robinson for being our faculty supervisor, um, as well as uh, graduate student researcher Josh Day. Um, I'd like to thank Josh for providing us his hardware and access to the HRVIP lab. Um, this testing data could not be obtained without his help. So here's our contact information. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation.